Hi everybody, it's Alex Kanash here from 69 Sniffing Brigade. Got a very special interview for everyone today with Dima, founder of the Wild Hornets. Now for those that don't know, Wild Hornets are an FPV manufacturer from Ukraine. They make really good FPVs that we've all been seeing on the internet, blowing up Russian tanks, RAB and other equipment. And they're one of the main suppliers to us when we're looking to buy drones to give to units in our fundraisers. And Dima and his team have very kindly invited us today to their warehouse where they do their work. And we're gonna learn a bit more about him, the company and how they do what they do and what the future of the industry is going to bring. So watch this interview and uh, hope you enjoy. Dima. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting us. Yeah. If I could start just by learning for everyone a bit more about how did the uh, organization Wild Hornets start? The Wild Hornets organization was established on the 31st of March, 2022 when the first video message to our audience was recorded. It was historically the beginning of our project. In that video, I said words like friends. We are starting a new project that will be related to FPV drones. It was this moment that marked the start of our project. In fact, the history of our project begins with our military. I've been a volunteer since the beginning of the war. So it all started when soldiers fighting on the front line approached me and asked, Dimitri, do you want to work on FPV drones? because we have a huge demand for this industry right now. That's how the Wild Hornets project began. I told the military, okay, give me a few days. I'll figure out what it is. After some time passed, I immersed myself in this area and gave the answer. Okay, guys, I'm ready to do this project. So I started this project at my own expense. At that time, there was no one to buy spare parts and components for these guys at their own expense. So I decided that I would help them. And at the same time, I will continue to study this topic and scale up my project at the same time. And um, did you have experience with drones before the full-scale invasion? No. no. So, but you, uh, you've got like an engineering background or just normal Ukrainian guy? No, I'm actually a programmer by profession and I'm quite well versed in modern technology. I am very interested in engineering, so I was very interested in how to apply it to the production of FPV drones. And of course, the topic of drones was very interesting to me. It all started with helping the military on weekends, and then it turned into a full-time job. I began to devote all my time to the topic of drones and their production. So, so you're an IT guy, and it's a, you know, it's a technical piece of equipment, and it's becoming a, a technical war. Like, where do you think drone warfare is gonna go next? How's it gonna keep evolving? I'll give you a little insight into what we are working on now, an automatic homing. I can also tell you that it is already in the process of testing in combat conditions. At the front line, we seem to be playing with the enemy. First, the enemy is on some frequencies, we are on others, and then vice versa. It's a kind of balance. The technology of automatic target acquisition will put an end to this whole story. This is what we are working on. That is, the drone will find the target automatically. It will not be interfered with by any electronic warfare, absolutely nothing. Therefore, it will be a very serious weapon that will be extremely difficult to counter. Yeah, so you're, t you're saying it will be sort of in that terminal phase as it's locked the target, the drone will just carry on and it doesn't matter if it has connection anymore. So it's just uh, a silent drone, so rab and jamming doesn't matter. Yes, it will be a very destructive weapon, very powerful. We are working on this technology with two teams. So we are working on several options in partnership with whom we will do this. The work is already in the home stretch. And we are now working on encrypting the technology so that it doesn't fall into the hands of the enemy because it will be used against us later. I can say that we will launch this technology into production approximately this summer. Well, this is obviously good news for Ukraine. Um, and, but we need to keep developing more, don't we? Because we're not fighting against an enemy that stands still either. Of course, Ukraine is developing the topic of FPV drones for the whole world. So I don't think we will stop there. Today, this will be a huge breakthrough. I mean, homing. But then there will be something more interesting. I think the next technology will be a squadron of drones, a kind of swarm of drones function that will find a target and attack it with several drones at once. This will be the next stage after automatic homing. It is technically possible to fly in a swarm where five, seven drones find and neutralize a target.
because usually one drone is not enough to completely destroy a tank, for example. You need several FPVs for such armored targets. Yeah, okay, that makes yeah. sense, yeah, 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 yeah. So, to talk a little bit about actually making the drones, is that something like simple, you know, can, can someone like me just follow your instructions or is it quite a complicated process? There is a widespread belief among the population that it is very easy to build a drone and that it can be done at home. But this is not the case. For such purposes, you need a team of people who are experts in their field. That's because there are a lot of parts made to order, specifically to each type of an FPV drone, that are also customized and modified for each task. Do you ever get problems with, with components? So, where there's a lot of need for different parts that go into your drones and other drones, you know, how do you deal with the challenges of having all the bits you need to actually produce the drone? This is an interesting question because I am personally involved in this work. Today, from the very beginning of the creation of Wild Hornets, I have been personally involved in gathering the details and spare parts. I take care of all these tasks myself. I have a huge circle of people, suppliers, with whom I constantly work. You could call it a whitelist. I have been working with them for a long time, almost from the very beginning. They cover all the critical points for me. So to say that we stopped because there were no spare parts, that has never happened before. We are constantly working on different options for supplying components for drones. We try to look a few steps ahead to understand what will happen next. One of our main tasks is not to stop, so we need to keep working and produce as many drones as possible. Because we're facing an enemy that is on a, on a war footing, Russia, China, and Ukraine has to arm itself. It can't just rely on America and Europe. So what does he think Ukraine and Europe and the rest of the world need to do to help companies like his be able to scale manufacturing and provide enough drones to win the war? What can other countries and organizations do or companies to make sure there are enough components available so Ukraine can win the war? I think it would be good for Europe to get involved in the production of FPV parts and the drone industry in general. There are a few European companies that have contacted us about collaboration and they want to partner with us to produce some spare parts for drones. As of today, we are having discussions with these companies. The purpose of this partnership is to create a certain surplus of parts to stop being dependent on the Chinese market, which currently dominates our supplies. We are explaining to our European partners that speed in deliveries is very important to us, but also the quality of the parts and, of course, the final price. We need to be able to compete with China on equal terms. The difference also lies in the approach to production. Chinese suppliers have a high speed in manufacturing parts, but the quality of spare parts suffers as a result. With European suppliers, it's the other way around. Quality comes first, but it takes a long time to produce quality parts. In Ukraine, the war is going on every day, and so time is sometimes a luxury for us. So we explain all this and try to find some compromises in our work. I believe that in the near future, we will receive supplies from Europe, and we are making every effort to make this happen. But I have to admit that a large percentage of parts and spare parts still come from China. I think that's, you know, that speed of delivery of equipment is how our charity works too. You know, that we can get unit request, do a fundraiser and buy drones. Like we recently went from request video to funds to making order of wild hornets in about five days, I think. So we move much quicker than governments can. So my, my question is, apart from really our own NGO, like who buy them, like how else do you get your drones out to the units that need them? If we go back to the beginning of the creation of the Wild Hornets, it was a difficult task. We checked each combat unit in detail, watched videos of successfully completed targets and met in person. But back then, there were fewer drones. Now, when there are many more drones and we've already scaled up our production, 
The military units have grown and developed along with us. We have our own community, more than 30 professional units. These are the units we work with on a regular basis, meaning we provide them with FPV drones. We do this because we see how the units use our drones to their maximum effect, hitting targets. But at the same time, we are looking for young units that want to develop in this direction and to help them as well. We work with them in the following way. We give them test batches, which can be five or ten drones, and watch the result of their work on the target. Feedback from the unit in the process is important to us. Sometimes it happens that guys take the drones and then disappear, do not get in touch. And if the unit communicates with us, we see the results of the work on defeating the enemy, and then we start to increase the supply of drones. And so, after a while, the unit gets on our list of priority units. This is how this number is constantly increasing. So you will make sure that you only give your drones to good quality operators and pilots that will do the most damage? No, I mean the number of drones. Because we allocate the number of drones in percentage terms, so many drones to a unit. And we can allocate this many to this unit. It all depends on the priority of the unit, and therefore new units receive significantly less. If we can just ask a bit about the units, like you, you said like there was a delay of like one day. Like, did that mean that the, you know, the pilots were unable to do their mission or, or that it cost people's lives? Yes, such stories do happen. We lost a position and unfortunately, there were casualties on our side. And all because we did not have time to deliver the drones in time. There were problems in communication with the unit, so they had no connection. We did not provide information on time and because of this, the position was lost. And unfortunately, I have to admit that these are not isolated stories in the war. Someone somewhere does not have time to do something. There's no communication and so on. That's why our priority is to produce as many FPV drones as possible, and as quickly as possible, to supply them to the frontline combat units. We are doing everything we can to help our military. The Wild Hornets project is entirely charitable. The team consists of people who are professionals in their field and who really want to help the military. So, we are all making every effort to win. We are not interested in commercial projects and tasks at the moment. We can see just some like, patches here in this flag here. Like, can you tell us a little bit like maybe about like this unit? Like they obviously use your drones. Are they one of your early uh, units that you told us about? This is a special unit for me because it is the same unit that offered me to work in the FPV area. This is the Bulava unit. These are the guys I started working with. I've known them since the very beginning of the Wild Hornets organization. So I can safely say that this is a part of us. This unit is now achieving extraordinary results in the fight. Just a few days ago, we received a video from them where the guys destroyed the 100th enemy military unit. Of course, they have made many more flights. No one even counts. But recently they had an anniversary and an enemy tank came under their sights, and it was the 100th one. Amazing. Yeah. And two more questions then, like, so, like, what can we expect from Wild Hornets in the future then? What's next, and how is it gonna keep evolving? The only way I see the fun developing is to scale up, to be able to reach a new level of drone production, and to be able to meet all the immediate needs and plan ahead. We have had a strong push of R&D, which means that our engineering is working at the maximum level. We have also hired an additional team to develop new products. At the same time, we are developing the test department to make drones even better and to reduce the number of Chinese spare parts. We are also continuing to refine the automatic targeting system. Significant resources of the team are devoted to this technology. And of course, we are looking for funding to scale up, convert finance into spare parts, and convert spare parts into a destroyed enemy. Today we can produce 5,000 drones per month without any problems. But we can scale up without any problems. We have everything technically ready. We are working on finding investors and funds for this. In conclusion, I would also like to say that our history of wild hornets began with nothing. We had only a garage where we took our first steps in this area on a whim. Today we have grown to everything we have, and I see no problem in growing much more.
<laughs> yeah. um, so my last question then on okay. that basis like we scale wild hornets we destroy the russians and we have victory what does Dima want to do after the war's won i want to return to what i did before the war i'm talking about tourism I spent a few years of my life traveling doing active tourism i really want to return to this that's all nothing else thank you for the conversation well everyone that was an interview with Dima of Wild Hornets. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure that you like, subscribe and continue to donate to all of our fundraisers so we can keep buying more brilliant drones that the Wild Hornets make for units like this. The quicker we can raise more money, the quicker we can defeat Russia and the enemy and then Dima can go on his holidays and everyone can have a bit more of a relaxing time. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all again soon. Hello. 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 Hello.